The presence of impurities in a solid will make the melting point to dash. Decrease, increase, unchange, zero. What's the answer? Welcome to today's class on likely questions on jam chemistry. Okay, which of the following is a physical change? Freezing of ice cream, burning kerosene, dissolving calcium in water, rusting. Now, a physical change is a change in which no new substances form and it can be reversed. So, which one here can be reversed? If you burn kerosene, once it's exhausted, it has finished. If you burn, dissolve calcium in water, you can't get the calcium back. Rusting, you can't get the iron back. So, but if you freeze ice cream, you can defreeze it and get back your ice cream. So, the answer is what? Freezing of ice cream. The presence of impurities in a solid will make the melting point to dash. Now, when you have impurities in a solid, what will be the effect to the melting point? Definitely, melting point will decrease. The melting point will decrease. Instead of being at zero, it will go to minus two or minus five, as the case may be. So it will decrease. But if, if it has to do with the boiling point, the boiling point will increase. Once there is impurity, melting point, once there is impurity in a solid, the melting point will decrease while the boiling point will increase. So the answer to this question is decrease. The melting point will decrease while the boiling point will increase. A mixture of petrol and water can be separated by dash. How do you separate a mixture of petrol and water? You separate it by use of filter paper, separating funnel, distillation, sieving. Um, petrol and water cannot mix well. So those two immiscible liquids, when you have immiscible liquids mixed together that cannot mix well, you use what we call separating funnel to separate them. What volume of oxygen is produced from the decomposition of two moles of potassium triazochloride 5 at STP? Molar volume at STP equals 22.4 gm cube. It's very simple. So this is an equation for the reaction. We are going to write potassium triazochloride 5. When you decompose it, you have potassium chloride plus oxygen. Then the next thing you're going to do is to balance the equation. Potassium is 1, potassium 1. Chlorine 1, chlorine 1, oxygen 3, oxygen 2. It's not balanced, right? So if we add, let's say we add 3 here, 3 times 2, 6. Then we come here and add 2. 2 times 3, 6. It is balanced, right? So 2 potassium, 1 potassium. So we come here and add 2. So 2 potassium, 2 potassium, 2 chlorine, 2 chlorine. 2 times 3, 6. 3 times 2, 6. So it is balanced. Now, the question says, what volume of oxygen is produced by the composition of two moles of this? Now, we are looking at the mole of this and the volume of oxygen at STP. So we say here, we have two moles. Two moles of this produced how many? Three times at STP, 22.4 dm cube. Therefore, two moles will produce, two moles will produce 2 times, that's the cross multiply, 2 times two, 3 times 22.4 divided by these two. And that will be what? 12, 7, 6. And that will give us 67.2 dm cube. So what's our answer? Our answer is what? C. Answer. Okay, so the next question. What is the mass of 4 moles of sodium chloride? Now, this is a direct question and you don't need to waste time solving it. Remember the formulas I gave you in stoichiometry? So you write out what you are giving. You are giving mass. Okay, so let's solve it here. So you are asked to find the mass. What is the mass? Uh -huh. Four moles, number of moles for, of sodium chloride. So you are giving the molar mass there. So we are going to find the molar mass. What's the molar mass of sodium chloride? 23 plus 35.5 and that will give us what five point this plus this eight fifty eight point five now you also find the mass so using the formula number of moles is equals to mass in gram over molar mass so we we have we are looking for the mass mass in gram so mass in gram will be number of moles times molar mass so mass in gram number of moles times molar mass what is the number of moles for? 
4 times 58.5. 4 times 58.5, and that will give us 4 times 5, 20. Uh huh. Times this, 32, 33, 34. Uh huh. Times this, 20, 21, 22, 23. 234 gram. So our answer is what? 234 gram. Answer. You see the way I'm solving without the calculator. So you have to learn how to solve without the use of calculator by, you know, learning your um, time step very well, okay? Although there is a video, although there is a calculator in your system, if you want me to make video on how to use a calculator in your system, please do well to comment, put it in the comment section. All right. The volume of a given gas is VCM cube at PM millimeter mercury. What is the new volume of the gas if the pressure is reduced to half at constant temperature. Now, many of you will see P, or P and V, and your heart will be cutting. Your heart does not need to cut. It's very simple. Just take it one by one. The volume of a given mass of a gas, so this is what? V1. V1 is VCM cube, uh huh. At P, P1 is what? P millimeter mercury. What is the new volume? So we're looking for V2. V2 is new volume, right? If the gas is reduced, if the pressure of the gas, so P2 is reduced to half. P2 is reduced to half. So P2 is reduced to half divided by half. Is that taken? Okay. So which formula are we going to use? We're going to use Boyce's law, which is P1V1 is equals to P2V2, right? P2V2. So what is our P1? P1 is P times V1. V1 is what? V. Is equals to P2. P2 is P over 2 times we are looking for V. So let's call this person. We are looking for V, right? So let's call this M so that it can help us to easily differentiate. So divide both sides by M. Divide both sides by M. You have that M cancel M. M. Then what's the next thing? So you have that P. So you have that P times V over M is equal to D. So cross multiply, you have that 2PV is equal to 2, 2PV is equal to PN. Are we there? Okay. So the next thing is what? Divide. Divide by PN. Divide by PN. Cancel, 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 cancel. Cancel, cancel. So you have what? 2V left. So what's your answer? 2V CMQ. Because this M is what you are actually looking for. All right. According to Charles' law, the volume of a gas becomes zero at dash. According to Charles' law, the volume of a gas becomes zero at dash. Minus 100, minus 273, minus 373, zero. It becomes zero at minus 273. How many unpaired electrons are in fluoride atom? Fluoride atom, first of all, write out the electronic configuration. 1s2, 2s2, 2p watts. Fluorine is 9, right? Fluorine is 9, so 2p5. Now, when, once you are looking for unpaired electrons, simply consider the p orbital. The p orbital. So, fill singly. 1, 2, 3. You are looking at 5. 4, 5. So how many unpaired electrons do you have? 1 remaining. So what would be your answer? 1. Okay. So how many electrons are in the L shell of this? So let's look at that question. How many electrons are in the L shell of phosphorus 15? So we draw. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. Remember, the first, two, the first one is 2. Other ones are 8 maximum. So 10 is here. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this is K. This is L. And this is M. Are we following? So how many electrons are in L shell? This is L. How many electrons do you have in L shell? L is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you have 8 electrons in L. So your answer is what? C.
An isotope has an atomic number of 15 and mass number of 31. The number of proton it contains is... Okay, now, atomic number is the same thing as proton number. Atomic number, you remember that thing that is like this? So you have Z, yeah? You have, okay, let me call it X. You have Z here, you have A here. So, this is the atomic number, which is same thing as your proton number. And this is your mass number, which is same thing as atomic mass. So, if it has atomic number of 15, the mass number of 31, the number of proton will be what? The number of proton is same thing as what? Atomic number. So, the answer will be what? 15. You see, some of them you don't even need to solve, just need to know the tricks. Okay? So, just know that atomic number is something as what? Proton number. The most electronegative character is dash. Which one is the most electronegative character? Now, electronegativity talks about the ability to do what? To attract electrons. So, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur. Electronegativity increases down the period. So, which one is you will count aluminum before silicon, before phosphorus and sulfur? So, sulfur is the most electronegative, while aluminum is the most electropositive for the elements listed out there. The bond formed between water and hydrogen ion to form hydrogenium ion is dash. Dative, covalent, electrovalent, ionic. Now, once you see a plus, a bond that has plus, Note that is dative or coordinate. Example, the difference between ammonia and ammonium. Ammonium is dative because of the plus. Ammonia is covalent, ordinary covalent. So this is coordinate covalent or dative. This is what? This is ordinary covalent. So since there is a plus here, what will be the answer? Dative. The shape of carbon-4 oxide molecule is dash. Angular, linear, pyramidal, tetrahedral. Of course, carbon dioxide molecule is what? Linear. So looking at this, X represents what? Now this is radioactive chemistry and it's very simple. So let's solve it. Okay, so looking at this, this would be 1460 uh -huh, plus. So this is beta particle. Beta particle is what? 0 minus 1e. This is how you represent it. Beta particle. 0 minus 1e. So we're looking for this person here. We don't know. So what you're going to do is that the reactant is going to subtract the product. So 14 minus 0 will give us what? 14. 6. Now, 6. 6 minus then 1 has minus 1, 2. Do you understand? 14 minus 0 is 14. 6 minus minus 1 is what? Minus plus min minus minus will give us plus. So you have 6 plus 1 will give us what? 7. So 14, 7. Look out for 14, 7. So C is the answer. Then oxygen in air can be removed by using what? How do you remove oxygen in the air? Lime water, slake lime, a pyrogyrol a solution, caustic soda solution. Once you hear oxygen in air, talk about what, what we call alkaline pyrogyrol. So the answer is what? Alkaline pyrogyrol. The ion responsible for hardness of water is what? Calcium ion, sodium ion, aluminum ion, potassium ion. Once you hear hardness of water, what should come to your mind? Calcium and magnesium ion. So the answer to this question is what? A.